Hi, this is Mike Rubble from dadcooksdinner.com, and this is how to rotisserie a duck with drip pan potatoes. Some quick duck anatomy. This is the front end of the duck with the wings and the breast, and these are the legs and the drumsticks and the cavity in the back. We need to clean up this piece of skin that always comes on the front of the duck. We don't want that flapping around in the rotisserie. So I cut it off with just a little bit left on the front. Tuck the wings underneath the duck, locking them into place so they don't flap around on the rotisserie. Now we trust the duck to hold it in a tight package so it doesn't flap around on the rotisserie. Measure out a piece of twine four times the length of the duck. Find the middle of the piece of twine and loop it underneath the little nub of the neck that is left on the front of the duck. Pull around to the back of the duck and tie a surgeon's knot by looping the twine over twice before pulling tight. Then pull it tight underneath the back of the breast. This will plump up the breast and hold it into position. Finish off that knot, then loop the length of twine underneath the knobs of the drumsticks so you catch them like that. Then tie another surgeon's knot, looping over a couple times. Oops, forgot to do my extra loop. And then tighten that knot and push the legs as close as you can to the back of the breast. You won't be able to get them all the way there, but get it into as tight a package as you possibly can. Trim off any excess twine, and the duck is trussed. There's a lot of fat under the skin of a duck. I score the breast in a diamond pattern to help that fat escape. I cut slits in the fat, trying not to cut into the meat, just through the fat and the skin, a half inch apart, going in one direction, and then changing and going in the other direction to give me my diamond pattern. Repeat on the other breast. The other reason to cut in a diamond pattern is it looks cool once the skin crisps up on the rotisserie. Normally, this is when I would dry brine the duck. I would sprinkle it with salt, and let it rest in the refrigerator at least overnight, preferably about 24 hours. But I forgot to do that on camera. So pretend this is the part where I salted it, stuck in the refrigerator, and then pulled it back out again before continuing. The last step before cooking is securing the duck to the rotisserie spit. Attach the first spit fork, and then run the point of the spit through the duck, starting with the cavity in the back and out the neck. Slide the spit fork around the thighs on the back of the duck and push it in as tight as you can. I flip the duck over to make this easier. And also, make sure to get the tail out of the way or else you won't really be securing the duck to the spit. Get your second spit fork, slide it onto the spit, and then secure the front end of the duck. I work the fork underneath the wings and as tight as I can against the nub of the neck and the breasts. Make sure the duck is centered in the middle of the spit. I can see that I am not in the middle of the spit, so I'm going to adjust a bit, measure, and yep, that looks about right. Then tighten everything down again. I squeeze the duck as tight as I can between the two forks before tightening them to make sure it's on there as secure as possible. Again, the duck tail is getting in my way. There you have it. One duck ready for the rotisserie. Now it's time to set the grill up for rotisserie cooking. I take out my grill grates so there's enough clearance for the duck to spin, set a drip pan on the burner covers, attach the rotisserie motor, and plug it in. Don't forget to plug it in, that's an important part. Then I turn my outer grill burners on to high to preheat the grill. That's burner number one, burner number six, and the infrared rotisserie burner. That usually takes me a couple tries, and once it's lit, I have to hold it in for about 20 seconds to get it really going. But once all of that is done, the grill is heating and will be ready in about 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, and the grill is preheated and ready to go. Let's put the duck on the rotisserie. Put the point of the spit into the motor. Set the notch on the other end of the spit into the groove on the grill. Make sure the drip pan is centered and turn on the motor. I let the duck make one full rotation, at least, to make sure everything is spinning freely and nothing's wobbling or catching. 
OK, everything looks good. Now turn all the burners down to medium. We want to preheat at high heat, but cook the duck at medium heat, about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The duck has been cooking for about 45 minutes, so let's talk duck fat potatoes. Duck fat is cooking gold. I'm not going to let that fat in the drip pan go to waste. I take a pound and a half of new potatoes, cut them in half, and par cook them by microwaving them for five minutes. They need a little bit of a head start before they go on the grill. Then I add them to the drip pan so they cook in the duck fat and the drippings from the duck. Potatoes cooked in the drippings under the rotisserie are fantastic, and the best ones come from a rotisserie duck. Please don't skip this step. You'll regret it. We're an hour and a half into cooking, and I think we're done. The skin looks fantastic, so let's turn off the rotisserie motor and check the internal temperature of the duck with an instant read thermometer. I'm checking the temperature in the breast, because I always do. But duck is cooked when the thighs are cooked. I put the thermometer into the deepest part of the thigh, and I want to see 180 to 185 degrees. And that's it. The duck is ready to come off the grill. We also want the drip pan potatoes to be browned. Oh, look at all that gorgeous duck fat. Sometimes I have to leave them in the grill for an extra 10 15 minutes to make sure that they are browned and ready to go, but they look pretty good right now. Let's take everything inside and get it ready to serve. The first thing we have to do is get the duck off of the spit and cut the twine loose. If we leave them on, they will stick as the duck cools, and we don't want to lose any of that delicious crispy skin, so let's get them off now. Be careful. The spit is a branding iron right now. You do not want to touch it with unprotected hands. I use a set of tongs to work the forks loose and to work the duck off of the spit. Sometimes this is a little more work than others. This was one time where the duck was fighting me and I really had to work with it to get it off. So I'm going to save you some of my struggles and just show you the highlights of the duck actually coming off the spit. See, the duck won't even stay upright while I'm trying to take it off. There we go. And now to take off the twine. A couple of cuts back near the cavity, and the twine should unravel from the duck. I find that for an adult, a half a duck is a good size serving. Instead of carefully carving, I'm just going to split this duck in half, one half for each person I'm serving. To split the duck, cut down both sides of the backbone. This will take you through the joint at the thigh and the ribs, which is easy to cut through if you have a nice pair of poultry shears. Then cut through the top half of the duck, aiming for the middle of the keel bone, which is right about here. I'm flipping the duck over so I can see it better while I cut through. And there it is. My duck is split and ready to serve. Scoop the potatoes out of the duck fat with a slotted spoon, letting any excess fat drip back into the pan, and it's time for dinner. One rotisserie duck with drip pan potatoes. This has been Mike Vrobel from dadcooksdinner.com. Thank you for watching. I'm filming, you could stay All right. that way. Thank you.